YouTube. Today we are working on the Honda 300. We have a front disc brake kit from our friends at superatv.com. Great people. Check them out. A lot of parts, all kinds of makes and models. Um, a typical Honda problem is that they don't have any brakes front or rear. Um, these Honda 300s have drum brakes for the front and rear and if you ride in water a lot or just typically over time they just don't work because they get old and um, mud in them dirt grime all kinds of things and they just quit working eventually um like this one has absolutely no brakes um fortunately it doesn't go too fast so that's not a problem but we're going to fix this problem with some disc brakes which are better than the drum brakes um this kit you can get it for around 200 dollars shipped to your door from super atv depending on where you go and depending on what coupon you can find or if they're having a sale so this is a great kit to check out this is the most affordable kit on the market for Hondas that have disc brakes. Um, great conversion, great addition to any ATV, especially, you know, Honda 300s. So let's get this started. So we got our box out here today. It's your trusty knife, utensil, whatever you need to cut it open. Um, let's flip it around. Super excited for this. Uh, couldn't put it in last week and I was riding the OG snorkel race hosted by King of the Deep guys should check them out as well i help them as best i can with everything so we got this put that to the side just shipping stuff to help it not move around so much we'll put this on the um so we get these boxes let's see what's in here this is going to be our, looks like our caliper yes this is our caliper all right um Looks pretty good. Put that over there, the other pile. This will be our other caliper. It's the same. They also come with your brake pads already installed, which is nice. You can also buy replacement brake pads on their website. I know some people have questions about that. Uh, little bracket. Adapter. Miscellaneous box. Miscellaneous bolts. Miscellaneous. Bunch of bolts. Bunch of bolts. This adapter. Let's try to see what we're working with here. Put that caliper down here. Put that caliper over there. Um, they pack this really well, so it's not going to get too shaken up. I've had a lot of stuff get damaged via shipping. Um, some, one of our mail ladies is very aggressive with delivering mail. Um, yeah, funny. Um, here's our disc, our brake disc. Very nice machine. Um, I'm glad to be actually having brakes on this bad boy. All right, let's get this thing started. So I was looking for the instructions and now you have to download the instructions and order details right here. So let's do that. Since I have no brakes, you need to make sure your fold is on the ground first before you start taking these lug nuts off. Um, that way the extra weight will help you. First things first, we're going to jack this spoiler up, get the tires off the ground. Um, once you do that, we'll take the tires off on each side. To get my lug nuts off, these are 14s. Yours may be different. First thing we are going to move this cotter pin on this axle nut and then we'll take the axle nut off so yours is probably looks like mine or it might look better than this one mm. I don't know. someone has bit my pliers look at that <sighs> you can't keep tools around here um, 
cannot keep tools. <sighs> Anywho, get your good set of pliers and grab this out. For this, I needed a socket to go in here, and I'd use a breaker bar. And I pretty much had to stand in front of the four wheeler as I twisted it off because I don't have any brakes. The four wheeler's trying to go forward. Twist this off. And then the next part is getting this drum off. This off right here. Ugh, that comes off. Can you see that's nice and pretty? I think the other side doesn't even have brake shoes. So I'm surprised that this has any. Well, God knows how long these have been in here. I don't know. How about this four wheeler used? I got it to kind of mess around and play around with. Once you get that cover off, you're going to have four 12 millimeter bolts. You're gonna need to take off. I've already loosened them up. Once you got those bolts undone, just tap on that a little bit and knock it loose. That's like 20 some years of rust right there. Um, we'll go on to our next step. We're gonna to have to detach this brake line. Um, I think this looks like a 12 too. Yeah, that's a 12 as well. Um, so if you want to detach it while it's on there, you can. That might be easier than holding it and doing it. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to put it back on there. Once you undo this brake line at the back, it's a 12. You get it. I actually have some brake fluid in there. I'm surprised. Um, I know on the right side, there is a horrible, horrible brake leak somewhere. I don't know if it's a seal or what. Um, I'm going to keep that there for now. Um, we'll go on to our next step. Make sure you have this bracket coming in towards the engine and you'll get your flush mount bolts and put them in there. And that way when you tighten them up, they'll fit right on in where that's like seated and they'll be flush against that. Um, so just make sure this is dented towards the inside. Also got to get the hub out. Which I should have done earlier because now I'm gonna have to fight to get it out. Okay, wasn't bad. This is an eight millimeter. Just heat it against something that you can hold it really. That's that one. See? And then I gotta get that one out as well. Um, just brace it against something. Oh, yeah, these are not as tight as I thought they were gonna be. I usually get like two pieces of board right here. I'll put this in actually over here. Flip it like this. And I'll get something and like feed across the top. So when it does fall down, it'll fall in between those two boards. So I'm gonna get another board. Oh, that's actually, see, that's it. I come to the right hand side, take your tire off, take this cloth cotter pin out which this one's newer so it's not as rusted in there as the other one nope. save that go ahead and take these two little bolts out again this is eight millimeter put those two little bolts in a safe place so go ahead and get this Bolt loosened up. Mine was a 24 for some reason. Because the other side's a 22. Um, yours may be different. That'll come right on out. You see, this side had absolutely nothing. Don't ask me why. Just tap the hub loose. I might have to give it a couple of harder hits. That'll come out. Um, Cause we'll have to reuse this. This you can put in a box if you want to convert it back to drums one day or if someone's interested in using it. So once you get that off, you've got these four 12 millimeter bolts. This is the brake line I'm talking about. It's a 12 millimeter as well. Mine was actually pretty loose. Um, 
I'm not surprised. Uh, this foil has had me, has given me a lot of surprises. Um, I'm actually going to put this washer in a box so I don't lose it. But just take that off and then give this a couple of taps and that'll come off. Put that in your box too. Again, this is on the right side. You're going to put your bracket up right here. Mine's a little rusty as you can tell. You get your four bolts. These are ones with the Allen wrench again. Um, line them up and pretty much start them by hand. Make sure your bag doesn't blow away in the trash. Or blow away. Period. You can't stand littering. Um, tighten all these by hand. The manual doesn't specify how much foot pounds these should be torqued down to, but just try to make sure they're snug. You don't want these going loose um, when you're riding. So. So you need to press these studs out. I had to use a press. Mine were absolutely rusted in there. Could not push them out with a hammer. So you might have to do the same depending on how they are. So this is actually how the hub and rotor go. You put the bolts through this brake disc. Then you put your spacers right here. Then you put your hub. Then you put your wheel spacer right on. You're going to want to put you some grease around these splines. And then install. So what you're going to do is get some grease. You're going to want to put it all on these splines and you're going to want to put it on the inside of the hub you got. Don't get any on your brake disc. You just want this on your hub. Don't put any on your brake disc. The brakes aren't going to work then, even though they're brand new, just because you got grease on them. Load that bad boy up and then slide this back onto the there. Put your lock nut on. You got some extra grease right here. Um, you might take it back out and put some more on the inside. Yeah. So you come over to your left side. You do the same thing. You put your disc brake rotor, your spacers, your hub, then your wheel spacer. Get you some more grease. Put it in the splines right here. Again, don't get any on your disc brake uh, rotor because then your brakes aren't going to have any, it's going to be hard for them to grab and they're just going to slide and not work well. So be cautious of that. Put plenty of grease along these splines. Um, put a lot of it in here. Slide it up. There you go. So we got the left side over here. We got the brake caliper right here. You see you got your bleeders valve right there. You want to make sure this is on top when you mount. And you got your two mounting holes right here. They conveniently put some cardboard in here so you don't press the piston in. So basically, you're going to, it'll go right onto the caliper. And it's going to mount up to those two holes right there. And so you'll get your crush washer and this little bolt and mount it up to the back over here. And you need to make sure your hub's all the way on. Because if not, your bolt's not gonna go through. So let me push this all the way on. There we go. And then tighten that up. Get your second lock washer and nut like these. These go at the bottom part, which is right here and once you do that it's time to tighten them up and i use a 14 millimeter to tighten these bolts up just do 
that and then I'll come at the bottom and tighten that up so make sure it's threading in there after that don't forget you got to tighten your brake line right here which this is a 12 millimeter and I've already snugged it up I just want to make sure it's tight and that's it and then you come in and put your axle nut back on this end your cotter pin and then your tire and wheel make sure everything clears and then fill it up with brake fluid and you're ready to go after you bleed the brakes <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.